connecting, you get connected with some people that you say, well, no, I'm not going to say nothing to them because they're not going to receive it like everybody in my church. Does. But what God's saying is we got to open our mouth now. We got to start saying something now because, see, what's actually happening here, the devil is getting ahead of us because we won't say nothing. Over in Esther, over in Esther, uh, when, when Mordecai told Esther, he said, you can't keep silent at such a time as this. Amen. You got to get to a place where you start speaking, you start talking, you start saying what God say to you. And you got to be listening in such a fashion. You say, okay, God, I got it, I got it, I, I got it. And when God starts directing you in a position that you need to get in, you say, okay, God, I heard you. What do I need to say? There's a lot of stuff that we're going through right now. We as saints of God cannot be nervous about this thing. Can't be scared. You can't. You can't be scared. And April, you can't just lay hands on folk that say, can you pray for me? You got to pray for some folk that don't want to be prayed for. Yeah, you have to call stuff out for people that don't want to be. The woman that was following Peter, man, and messing up all this stuff. She didn't want, she didn't want that cast out of her. The men in the city didn't want to cast her because they were making money out of her. But sometimes when God give you assignment because of what's been entrusted in you, you can't be nervous about this. We, we're at a time right now, we're in 2013, and about to go in 14. And do y'all see all the stuff that's happening around you? They even had on the news this morning where a uh, 15 year old boy, 16 year old boy, just walked down the street and want to knock somebody out. Just walk up in and pick them. Hey, Amen. <coughs> Don't y'all know y'all need to pray for your children? If you're nervous about something, how in the world are you going to teach them about? Amen. You're talking about parents being scared of children. <coughs> I raised a child to be scared of. You talking about knocking somebody out. <laughs> Amen. But that's what God is saying. If, if, if the devil can get to your house and you won't do nothing about it. the last few weeks have helped us get to another area. And, I, and, I, and this is what I'm praying. I'm praying that in every respect that we will start reading, we will start studying, we will start praying. We get into another realm of God. The Bible says we ought to pray without ceasing. I'm talking about we pray every day. Just pray. Because you never know the prayer that you're praying might lead you to something else because you need to pray that day. And, you know, how sometimes you're driving and, and, and something hits you, you need to start praying right then and you don't know why. You just, just need to start praying. There might be an accident on the street. There might be something about to happen before you get out of the car. You start praying at that moment because you really don't know. You don't understand you're going into Dollar General and you think that everything will be all right. And somebody comes in Dollar General just to shoot up Dollar General and you're in there and God has already protected you. You might be on your job, you know. Somebody just, just they gonna fire him that day or something go wrong and something happened before they left home. You don't know why you're in this position, but God allowed you to walk in that position because there was an anointing on your life. And because there was an anointing on your life, he let the anointing flow and build it with you. You don't know why that girl came over to you and told you her business that day. You don't, you don't know why she just stopped at your desk or she stopped in your place or stopped in your area or you was at the water fountain or you might have been in the bathroom and she just started talking just to you. You don't understand it. God said, we're in a day right now to where we have to be mindful of what we're saying, what we're doing, and who we're talking to. Because there's so many people hurting right now because they're scared to death. 
if so many people are hurting right now because they don't know what to do. We've been churching and churching and churching and churching. We've been doing Bible class. We've been doing youth meetings. We've been doing conferences and all. And people are still dying around us because the only people we talk to are the people that we meet in the room with us. What about that person that don't look like you? What about that person, again, that just walk up to you and you don't like her? She's never like you. What about that person? She talked about you yesterday or day before yesterday and you heard her. And now she comes and she wants to talk to you. She might not understand why she's there. But the Bible says in John 6 that Jesus don't draw you, you can't come. You might be the assignment or she might be your assignment that day. Our children, our children are here. Ryan is uh, 16 and, and Jay is 8, I believe, 7 or 8. And, and you know, you never know because what we're teaching them. It might be somebody at school that they need to talk to. And they, they, because something been instilled in church with them, they might keep that boy from doing what he's doing. Do you understand what I'm saying? But you can't be scared. You can't be scared of this anointing that God has given you. Paul told Timothy, he said, you're in a leadership position now. You got to take lead. Yes, you used to be a follower. But you followed so well, God promoted you to lead. He said, well, Pastor, I'm not a leader. Well, you might not be in your own right. But the Bible said, God knew you before you come out of your mother's womb. Where are you? God, are you scared? Or you're going to guard this thing that's been entrusted in you. God has given you something. What you going to do with it? What you going to do with that word that's inside of you? And I said to you all the time, I asked you a few minutes ago, does it make sense? And I see some of you writing sometimes. I see some of you, 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 you're recording your message sometimes. If you're really listening and it's doing something for you, then God holds you accountable for what you heard. And so I pray that what you heard, you're going to do something with what you heard. Amen. Because if God is God, and he is, he is, he is God. He is God. Whatever he put in you, he put it in for a reason. Let us pray. We thank you, Master, now for this day. I bless you for the word that you've given us now. Thank you for the direction that you given unto us. I thank you that you changed what I was saying, Master. Say what you said. I thank you that I heard you. I bless you now for these, your people that have come to, to hear and receive your word. And, and Master, we even realize now that we got strength in where we are. And we're not scared. Because we know we have you. And the only fear we ought to have is the reverence that we have toward you. We always stay in constant awe of where you are with us, God. And Master, because of this, God, we just said thank you for today. I thank you, Master, for the ability to see things and hear things, and especially hear you. I thank you, God, for the ability to know that the demons and the devil around us, oh God, they have the power of us. Master, we have strength to know that we can uh, speak to them, God, and they have to plead just at your name, God. So, God, I bless you today. I bless you for. Uh, how you allow us just to come and fellowship one with another. And so, Master, we continue to ask that you just direct our path throughout the rest of this day. I ask God now that uh, the service that will be at 2 o'clock in the park, God, we, we pray for your availability to, to be there. And we'll respond just because your spirit is there. We ask, oh God, that the people will be fed today, oh God, will understand it's you and not us. We ask and pray now, God, that you just bless uh, the leaders, those that are in position about to to do what you need to do, God. And continue to ask that we won't just do this in this time. But Master, we'll make ourselves available to what you've given unto us. And so, God, I thank you for this day. I thank you, Master, for this day. Give us traveling grace now. Bless us in every area, God. Bless us through this Thanksgiving Christmas season. To Master, to understand this is not about us getting things, but Master, it's about you. It's about what we feel about you and the fellowship we have with you. We will not be selfish, but Master, we'll be mindful of what you've done for us, and Master, we'll pay it forward. Thank you, God, for today. Thank you for what you're doing today. I bless you, man. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.